Thanks for the introduction. So I will be talking about non-interactive zero knowledge for MP from learning with errors. This is a joint work with Chris Parker. So we start the talk with reviewing the definition of uh, zero knowledge protocols. In 1985, Goldwasser, Michali, and Rakoff uh, uh, defined, introduced zero knowledge protocols. These are basically interactive protocols between a prover and the verifier. And the goal is that the prover wants to convince the verifier that a certain statement is true, that a certain string X is in a certain language L. And we need these uh, protocols to have uh, two properties. One is soundness, which means that if the statement is wrong, if X is not in L, then a cheating prover should not be able to fool the verifier. The second requirement is zero knowledge, which says that, uh, okay, which says that, what? Which says that the, after the protocol ends, uh, the verifier learns nothing beyond the fact that uh, X, is L, X is in L. So uh, soon after zero knowledge protocols were, uh, were defined, uh, in 1986, uh, Goldrich, uh, Mikali, and Wigderson showed that if one-way functions exist, then every NP language has a zero knowledge uh, system. Uh, in 1988, uh, Bloom, DeSantis, uh, Mikali, and Persiano considered the notion of non-interactive zero knowledge. Their non-interactive zero knowledge, or NISIKI for short, is a zero, are zero knowledge uh, systems with, uh, without any interaction. The pr uh, protocol just consists of a prover sending a single message to the verifier. And both the prover and the verifier uh, have access to a CRS where CRS either stands for common reference string or common random string. So in the common reference string model, pr prior to the start of the protocol, there is a trusted setup phase where, which produces this CRS. However, in the common random string model, the CRS can be any random string. And uh, we prefer the common random string model because we often have publicly available uh, sources of randomness, such as like uh, the lottery number. So with, in the common random string model, we can uh, avoid the trusted setup phase. Uh, Nizuki systems have found plenty of applications. For instance, they can be used to achieve CCA security. They can be used to build advanced signatures such as group and ring signatures. And most recently, they have been used in the context of uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, so uh, we have uh, uh, many uh, various uh, constructions of Nizuki systems for all MP languages based on different assumptions. Here, uh, I list these assumptions. Uh, so the first assumption is trapdoor permutations. This is by the same BDMP work. and. Uh, a fake uh, Lapidot Shamir work. The second assumption is uh, the second assumption is hardness of certain problems in pairing friendly gr groups. This is by Grof, Ostrowski, and Sahai. The third assumption is indistinguishability obfuscation. This is by Sahai Waters. Uh, the fourth assumption is optimal hardness of an uh, uh, ad hoc variant of search LWE. This is by a recent uh, work of Canetti, Chen, Holmogren, Lombardi, Rothblum, Rothblum, and Vix. And the last assumption, which is the most related to this uh, work, is circular secure fully homomorphic encryption. This is by the same CCH plus 19 work. So if you look at this list of assumptions, you see that uh, one category of assumptions is missing. In fact, this list does not contain any uh, construction from standard lattice assumptions, and in particular, the uh, popular LW assumption, which was introduced by Regev in 2005. And building Nizuki systems for uh, all of NP has been a long standing open problem to the point that there was even a bounty for constructing, construct, constructing it. Uh, through the years, there have been many attempts and partial results towards uh, this goal. And uh, finally, uh, uh, in this, uh, in this work, we finally resolve uh, this problem and we show that Assuming LWE, every NP language has a Nizuki system. So this is the main result in this uh, work. So, uh, so we build the first Nizuki system for all of NP from uh, a standard lattice assumptions. This is, in fact, the first Nizuki system for all of NP from any assumption with worst case hardness guarantee. It is based on the worst case uh, hardness, uh, hardness of approximating certain short vector problems within, uh, on, on, on lattices to within uh, polynomial factors. 
just like uh, GOS and CCH plus 19, our NISDQ system can be instantiated in two modes. In the first mode, which is in the common random string model, we get a, a statistically zero knowledge argument, which means that it is sound against computationally bounded provers and zero knowledge against a computationally unbounded verifier. In the second mode, which is in the common reference string model, it is a computationally zero knowledge, knowledge proof, which means that it is sound against unbounded uh, provers and zero knowledge against bounded uh, verifiers. Furthermore, uh, both of these two inst instantiations have compact CRS, which means that the size of the CRS is just a polynomial in the security parameter. It's independent of the size of the statement, independent of the size of the witness, independent of the size of the circuit verifying the NP relation. So uh, now we will uh, discuss uh, the prior, uh, prior works which heavily influenced our paper. So we get our result by building on top of a recent line of work which uh, soundly instantiates the fiat Chamir transform in the, standard, uh, in the standard model. So the fiat Chamir transform takes a, um, a public coin interactive protocol, for instance, the, this uh, zero knowledge uh, uh, protocol where the prover first sends the uh, the first message alpha to the verifier. The verifier uh, sends a challenge beta, which is a random uh, string to the prover, and the prover sends the final uh, uh, message gamma to the verifier. The fiat Chamber transform takes this uh, protocol, interactive protocol, and converts it to a non-interactive protocol in the following way. It puts in the CRS a description of a hash function, and now uh, the single message that the prover sends to the verifier has two components. The first component is the same alpha that the prover sends in the uh, interactive version. Mm, now the prover can implicitly compute the challenge by applying the hash function to, to alpha. And then the prover mm, com completes the proof uh, by uh, uh, producing the uh, appropriate gamma for this challenge and uh, uh, alpha. So upon receiving this proof, the verifier can uh, compute the uh, challenge by applying the hash function to alpha, and then the verifier proceeds to verify the proof just as before. Now for this transformed uh, protocol, uh, showing that it is zero knowledge uh, is easy, uh, but the main challenge is that it's showing that it uh, preserves soundness. So this is because uh, the prover has uh, offline access to the hash function, and it can uh, try different uh, alphas to cook up some alpha which uh, hashes in some fortunate way for him which, uh, and uh, allows, allows it to, uh, to, complete, to successfully complete uh, 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 his, his, his proof. So this is, uh, this is, so this is some of the reason that uh, 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 showing uh, soundness is a challenge. Now, uh, CCH plus 19 uh, overcomes this uh, challenge and build NISDQ system for all of NP by using a hash family with a special property called, called correlation intractability for circuits. So correlation intractability is a, is a property which was first, uh, first defined by Canetti, Goldrich, and uh, Halevi for slightly different purposes. Uh, CCH plus 19 use correlation intractability for circuits to get uh, their result. So the definition of, we see the definition of, the definition of correlation intractability here. So we say that a hash function is correlation intractable for circuits, for a circuit class, if for any circuit in that circuit class, given a correctly sampled, uh, given a correctly sampled hash key, no polynomial time adversary can uh, find an input x such that hash of x equals c of x. This is the definition of correlation intractability for circuits. And in the next slide, we will uh, show how CCH plus 19 Use, uses uh, uh, correlation intractability for uh, circuits to get their result. Okay. Uh, so uh, CCH plus 19 instantiates the fiat Chamir transform with correlation intractable with CI hash function for circuits. So in particular, it puts the key of a CI hash function in the CRS. Now, if we have a cheating prover, this cheating prover, in order to cheat, in order to uh, uh, prove a wrong statement, prove a, uh, prove a statement for an x which, is x which is not in the language L, then this cheating prover must find an alpha such that the challenge, the hash of alpha, is a bad challenge. A bad challenge is one of the rare challenges which uh, 
allow the prover to complete his proof. It is rare because the underlying protocol, uh, it is rare because the underlying protocol has soundness and therefore uh, only a negligible fraction of the challenges, uh, uh, the challenges let the prover complete a bad proof, complete a, wrong, a proof for a wrong statement. So this is the task of the prover. Uh, however, the other, uh, also, uh, Okay. Okay, so CCH plus 19 also showed that if public key encryption exists, then we can, we can build zero knowledge systems for all of NP, where the bad challenge is a function of the first message alpha, and this function can be represented by a polynomial side circuit. So if you combine these two requirements, if you look at these two requirements, the prover, in order to cheat, has to find an uh, alpha such that hash of alpha is a bad challenge, but, but this bad challenge is C of alpha for a circuit C. So the, uh, the cheating prover, in order to cheat, has to break the correlation interactability of this hash function. Now, from this description, we, uh, we can uh, say that given, a pub given public key encryption and CI hash function for circuits, we can get NISB key for all of NP. For the first component, for public key encryption, we have known for a long time how to build it for, from uh, LWE. But for the second component, for CI hash functions, uh, CCH plus 19 build the C CI hash functions for circuits from um, any circular secure FHE. Unfortunately, although we have plain FHE from LWE, but we do not know how to build a circular secure FHE from a standard lattice assumptions. And this is the main reason that uh, CCH plus 19 cannot rely on uh, uh, LWE or standard lattice assumptions. Our main contribution in this work is that we build correlation intractable hash function for all circuits from standard lattice assumptions, from either SIS or LWE. In this talk, we will focus on the SIS construction. Just uh, recall that uh, SIS stands for short integer solution, which is a, a which is a computational problem defined by ITA in 1996, so it predates uh, LWE, and it's potentially weaker than LWE. LWE implies uh, SIS. So, uh, 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 so our construction uh, makes heavy use of fully homomorphic commitments, uh, and in particular, the uh, uh, fully homomorphic commitments of uh, Gorbanov, Baikun, Tanatan, and Biggs, which are based on the, uh, which is based on the uh, uh, fully homomorphic encryption scheme of Gentry, Sahai, and Waters. So these fully homomorphic commitments are commitments with homomorphic capabili capabilities. We, we use these two algorithms, commit and com and eval, with the following property. So if we have a commitment to a circuit and a string x or a, or a commitment to a string x, then we can use this eval algorithm to homomorphically evaluate a commitment to C of x. So very similar to fully homomorphic encryption, but in the context of uh, Fully, uh, in the context of commitments. So now let's, uh, now we will describe our construction. In our construction, the hash key is a, a commitment to a dummy circuit D. This D is a dummy circuit which maps, uh, which maps big L bit, uh, big L bit strings to uh, small L bit uh, outputs. Then to evaluate the hash function on an input X, First, uh, this uh, hash key is homomorphically evaluated on the input x. So we get the C, which is a commitment to D of x. And then uh, we convert this commitment to D of x, we convert it to C bar, which is something that we call uh, an inert commitment. So we, call, uh, we name it inert because, uh, we name it an inert commitment because it is a commitment to D of x but it, it has no longer any homomorphic property. It has no longer homomorphic property. So, so the name uh, inert commitment. And uh, one more thing to notice here is that this C bar is L bit uh, long, is an L bit string, and D, D of X is also an L bit string. So this C bar and D of X uh, uh, are the same size. Inert commitments are the same size uh, as the thing that they are committing to. Now I have to, we have to see what are these inert commitments how does this uh, inertify algorithm, how does this transformation works, and how do these things help us in getting correlation interactability? Before that, it's very useful to compare, uh, compare our construction with CCH plus 19. Our construction is very similar to CCH plus 19. 
The CCH plus 19, however, instan uh, uses uh, the instantiates the uh, commitment scheme in an extractable mode, so they, they do have um, they, 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 their commitment scheme has an encryption algorithm and decryption uh, has a decryption algorithm and decryption keys, and the hash key in their commitment has also an additional component. This additional component, this additional component is a commitment to the complement of the decryption function. So this additional component, this commitment to the complement of the decryption function is the main reason that they need circular security because they are committing to something that depends on the decryption key. So the, so, so the need for circular security. Now to uh, evaluate the hash function, CCH plus 19 proceeds similarly to, uh, to, uh, to compute C, to compute a commitment to D of X, but then uses the, this commitment to D of X with the commitment to the complement of the decryption function to homomorphically evaluate commitment to a commitment to the complement of the dec uh, decryption of uh, D of X. And this would be the output of their hash function. Then they proceed to uh, show that this, this, uh, their function is, uh, their function is, uh, their hash function is uh, uh, correlation intractable by, uh, by uh, dis uh, describing a, a diagonalization argument. Now back to our own construction, we need to show the correlation intractability. We need, to, we need to show that for any C, it is hard to find an X such that an inert commitment to D of X equals C of X, where D is the dummy circuit. But remember that uh, uh, these commitment schemes are hiding. So a commitment to a dummy circuit is indistinguishable from a commitment uh, to, the, to the circuit C itself. So, for, so we can replace a D with C in the requirement for correlation intractability which means that now we, for correlation intractability, we need to show that for any C, it is hard to find an input X such that an inert commitment to C of X equals C of X. So to show this, to, show, uh, to prove this requirement, to satisfy this requirement, we, we state the main property uh, of uh, our inert commitment. The main property is as follows. Uh, the main property is as follows. If we have, uh, if we have, uh, okay, sorry. So the main property is as follows. It says, the main property says that uh, if you multiply G, which is the gadget, Michancho Picard's gadget matrix by the inert commitment to a string V, then the result is A, which is a uniformly random matrix in the public parameters of our commitment scheme times a commitment coins R, which is a non-zero short vector, plus GV. So this is the main, uh, the main property of our uh, uh, inert, the main property of inert commitments. To see how this uh, gives uh, correlation intractability, assume that we have inert commitment of V equals V. Then we can multiply both sides by G. As a result, we get AR plus GV equals GV. Cancel, we cancel GV from both sides. This implies that commitment coins R would be a solution to SIS uh, problem. So assuming SIS, our construction is correlation intractable. Now, of course, I have to describe how, how this uh, inertify algorithm works. How, can I, how I can uh, transform a commitment, a normal commitment, to uh, an inert commitment. If you are familiar with GSW and GVW works, then you know that the a normal commitment to a string V has the following format. It is AR, where R is a short matrix, plus V transpose tensor G, where G is again the michan Picard gadget matrix. I want to transform it to an inert commitment to V, which has the following form. It is G inverse of AR, where small r is again short vector plus GV. Uh, and for this, uh, for this purpose, uh, to, sh to show how this uh, transformation happens, I state the main property of, uh, I, state, uh, I, I state a key equation which can be, uh, which is a straightforward to verify. So the equation is as follows. Uh, if for any matrix M, if I multiply a commitment to V by G inverse of vectorization of M. So I, I multiply AR plus V transpose tensor G by G inverse of vectorization of M, then the result is, uh, a r, a small r, where this uh, a small r, vector r is r times g inverse of vectorization of m, 
and it is short because R is short and G inverse is always short, plus MV. Now in this equation, replace M with a matrix G and you get uh, what you need for the inertify algorithm. So this is, uh, this is the construction. We will, uh, I will uh, finish the talk with uh, uh, stating a few open uh, problems. So the first open problem is the problem of uh, constructing non-interactive non witness in distinguishable system for MP from LWT. We mentioned that recently there were three interesting and independent works, works which used our CI hash functions to build two round uh, witness, in distinguishability, witness in distinguishable systems for MP. So we asked whether we can improve it or build non-interactive witness in distinguishable systems for MP. This is the first question. The next question is that, can we build a, a statistically sound and uninteractive zero knowledge system from LWE uh, in the common random string model? So right now, the construction in our paper, uh, the statistically sound NISIC construction in our paper is in the common reference string model. We asked whether we can get uh, the same result in the, uh, in the preferable common random string uh, model. For the, the third question is, uh, can we build multi-theorem statistical zero-knowledge uh, Niziki systems for MP from uh, LWE? So right now, the bare construction in our uh, paper is, uh, is only a sing single theorem. If you apply the generic OR trick, then what you get uh, is a multi-theorem system, but only computationally zero-knowledge multi-theorem uh, Niziki system. So we ask whether we can get multi-theorem statistically zero-knowledge system. And the last question is, can we uh, enhance the efficiency of our CI hash functions? That's it. Thanks for your attention. So we have time for a question or two. If you have a question, please come to the microphone. Okay, so I will ask a question, uh, if you don't mind. So, uh, commitments, can, so uh, this zero knowledge proof system is based on the uh, LWE problem, and uh, commitments can be built from uh, simpler assumptions like uh, SIS. Uh, is there uh, um, any way to get uh, fully homomorphic uh, commitments or some other related primitive uh, directly from SIS without resorting to LWE? Actually, we get the fully homomorphic commitments from SIS, but the reason that we need LWE is for the underlying zero knowledge protocol. So that's, that's why we need LWE. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, okay, so we'll, uh, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.